Shalom, Akim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, who rule well, and honest to you, brothers, who are out there doing the work in sincerity and in truth. Okay, this lesson is entitled Seeing the Bigger Picture. Because oftentimes, um, us brothers who the Lord has blessed with this faith and with this truth, you know, it's truly an honor to have this and it's a privilege. But oftentimes being in this flesh or different things that go on, you can often get caught in your own world. You can often find yourself holding grudges. You can often find yourself being frustrated or too wrapped up in the worries of the world too wrapped up in your financial issues, too wrapped up in your relationship with your wife or children, or whatever the things that you do have going on, you can find that, that, that those things can knock you off your balance. Or whether it comes to drinking or whether it comes to just anything in this uh, society, you know, your job, all of that. But in the midst of all these things that we go through, you have to remember that we're being purged you know we're we're being tried our faith is being tried you know it's a um the apostle peter called it a fiery trial and when you read the book of sirach chapter 2 it tells you that you're gonna go through um uh it tells you that gold is tried in the fire and it also tells you in sirach chapter 2 that when you come if you come to serve the lord prepared our soul for temptation and in Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 12, it tells you the Lord is going to chasten you. Okay? So, it's letting you know all these different things that's going on. And that's why in the midst of all the things that you catch, in the midst of the tribulation, in the midst of the hill, you have to see the bigger picture. You know? Because a lot of times Satan can try you in certain... Um, uh, uh, in certain small issues you know just how you're going to conduct yourself just how you're going to be how you're going to be that you know and you have to keep your mind on the bigger picture of having faith in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai in order to make it through alright this is uh, Psalm 94 verse 11 the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity okay it, the Lord knows the thoughts that you have in your head, the worries that you have, all of those things. And they're vanity. Why? Because if the Lord wanted you to be rich tomorrow, he can make you rich. You know, if the Lord wanted you out of a situation at this very moment, he could easily take you out of it. But there are certain things that that when you go through things you might not understand them at the moment or you might not really uh, 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 see the point but there is a point to everything you know there are certain things that's why the scriptures in, um, in the book Corinthians it always tells you to examine yourself you know so there is a point to everything that happens. The Lord isn't everything. His eyes are everywhere. He sees all. He's within all. He is all. So, there's a point to everything. He knows your vain thoughts and the problems that you're going through and your worries. But the thing is, do you understand? You know? And I will move on, and that's part of the bigger picture, but I'm going to move on to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay? And this is a very heavy scripture, you know, 
These are very heavy scriptures and words here. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. You can't be worried about all this stuff that goes on out here. And that's where it goes in into faith. Because you're going to go through a lot of different things, man. And a lot of them going to seem unfair or a lot of them just going to be messed up. But you can't just sit back and worry about all that. You have to realize what we're involved in. All right. The bigger picture at the end is to be found worthy of salvation, to be of that great number of the hopeful elect and to be saved and to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And while we're here in this society, our goal is to do the will of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And if you've been a man who's called to go teach and go do this work, then you go out and teach and go do this work. If you're a man who's been called to help the ministry, OK, well, then you do your part and you help the ministry. You have those treasures, you store your treasures and you put your energy and all your might into this. Okay, don't be worried about what's going on on the other side. All right, don't be like some of these guys out here that, that always want their emotions to be catered to. Don't be like some of these guys out here who always want some form of street credit or approval of the world while at the same time wanting to be the... Uh, uh, reverence as the highest men of the lord you know don't don't be that store for yourself treasures in heaven you can't have both see the bigger picture this is what we're doing at the end of the day this society is vain everything that they're doing is vain satan rules it and everything is being run by demons so if you got all these different worries and things going on it's completely natural being in this flesh but honestly let it go Remember Job? Remember our Lord Yahweh Shah? The Lord knew he was going to die. And he didn't do anything wrong. But he knew what he had to do because he saw the bigger picture. You know, and if he didn't perform that, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing today. All right. And I'll go on to verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So your eye needs to be single. It needs to be focused. All right. Now we got the things that that bother us in the flesh. We have our temptations, whether that comes to women, whether that comes to just financial issues. Uh, but mainly when you see Jake, it's always they either uh, a brother is either very emotional. Um, he either has financial issues or woman issues. And that's usually what you see your brothers of uh, of. Uh, uh, be arguing with each other and can't get over it. You know what I'm saying? Holding grudges. That usually be Jake's biggest uh, uh, issue that you will see. And, um, you know, but honestly, even in the midst of whatever disagreement or whatever comes, the Lord has given us a given us protocol. He's given us a, a, a code of conduct on how to behave ourselves and how to be merciful. And to show mercy like we were shown mercy. So even in the midst of that, you're still meant to keep your integrity and let your eye be single. Okay? Verse 24. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high and mammon. All right, so you can't be on both sides. You can't be worried about everything in this world, or you can't be seeking the approval of people in this world, or even the approval of the wife and family and all these other things. You you know, you have to do what you have to do when it comes to serving your how about Shem Yahweh Shai. And sometimes, see, you're going to be put into these situations where you're going to be tried. And you have to come out approved, man. 
sometimes these different connections to the world or whatever that you have um or when the lord puts you down a certain path it's going to hurt you're going to have to sever these connections you're going to have to change certain things you're going to have to be able to adjust in order to achieve that goal and are you willing to that's the thing are you willing to all right and this is um i'll go down to verse 31 this is still matthew chapter 6 um i start verse 31 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things but seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof all right so it's letting you know that you don't it's literally telling you you don't need to be worried about what we gonna eat what we gonna drink or what we gonna do how we gonna do this what's gonna be that you need to be focused uh uh on the kingdom of heaven like i said let your eye be single and verse 33 it says but seek ye first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you but you also have to believe that in faith that the lord is going to do that one of the top things that you have to believe is that you are doing nothing on your own it is being given to you by the heavenly father that's one of the first starts to proving your faith is eliminating the fact that you're doing everything on your own now you do have to do your part if you need a job go apply for one you know what i'm saying if you need food in your house go to the store and go get some you know but as far as having all these worries of the world how i'm gonna do this how i'm gonna do that how i'm gonna do that you do what you can in this part and the lord is going to take care of the rest but you need to be focused on the bigger picture which is seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven of the most high and his righteousness all right so you don't need to be taking therefore a thought for this and that and all this other stuff unnecessarily worrying yourself you know all right go to matthew 18 and 9 and if thine eye offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire so it's telling you if you got certain issues with yourself or certain uh, uh, behavior patterns or whatever the case uh, uh, certain uh, uh, issues that you have going on um, cut it off get some discipline be disciplined in the word fast pray and get yourself together if you feel like this is something that's holding you back or, or stopping you from reaching the kingdom of heaven that don't mean take your actual eye out but what it means but it's is using the body parts to show how serious that it is if it's something that's holding you back well even if you like it it may be a pleasure it may be something going on with you but get rid of it all right and it's better for you to get rid of the pleasure now so you can enjoy the everlasting pleasures in righteousness in the kingdom of heaven than to just like nah i ain't finna give that up and then you don't and you get destroyed for being wicked in this society or eventually satan satan takes things and use it against you then before you know it you ain't faultless anymore you all messed up you done got into some shit all right i'm gonna go to job chapter 13 verse 15 and um 
and you know, I'll get ready to conclude this lesson. Um, it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. So he's letting you know that even when Job went through what he went through, he said, I will trust in him. And he will maintain his righteous ways before him. Now, it also says he shall be his salvation. So his mind is on the bigger picture, even in the middle of all that that Job went through and was going through. His friends even turned on him and thought he was being wicked. His own friends, you know, because of what happened to him. And which, yeah, that wasn't right because you the the scriptures tell you not to further the affliction of a man. So it was, it, it's sort of the equivalent of kicking him while he's down a bit, you know? And Job still kept the bigger picture, which is why I brought this out. He was catching hell, but he still was able to keep his integrity and realize what was going on and where his treasure really was and that was in the kingdom of heaven and I'll get this last scripture um, Proverbs 30 and 7 two things have I required of thee deny me them not before I die remove far from me vanity and lies give me neither poverty nor riches feed me with food convenient for me lest I be full and deny thee and say who is the Lord or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain. Okay? So what is he saying here? He's saying if I get too much, I'm going to be proud and full of myself. You know? And be like, I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. Nothing's wrong with having money, but it's a reason why you don't have uh, uh, three billion dollars or Warren Buffett money and all that different stuff because you don't want to be full and end up denying the Lord and like I did this I did that I remember one guy um, it was years back he had owned a a, a a business and he told me he was about to purchase some apartments and he was just like, yeah, I'm going to get some apartments and I'm going to renovate them, have them all that, and watch all the people come uh, uh, cry their tears of joy on my shoulder and praise me. You see, that's a man who is full and he's like, who is the Lord? But now I can tell you I've seen that same guy and he ain't doing good anymore. Just like it was given to you, it can be taken away, you know. And it goes on in uh, verse 9. Or well, lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain. Because if you poor, you're going to try to steal so you can eat, you know. So it's putting you in a very bad position. So it's telling you, hey, just give me what I need so I can be convenient and content and focus on the bigger picture instead of being distracted by all the vanity and lies and poverty and worries of the world. You don't need to be distracted by the worries of the world and whatever worries you got. Because at the end of the day, we have our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. We have the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. And Lord will you, brothers, will edify. Shalom.